Hey, what's going on guys? It's King Rancher 13. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to another video. Hopefully y'all been liking that we've been putting up videos more recently and more often. Anyways, today what we're going to be going over is um, some things on the F-350 King Ranch. Thank y'all so much for your awesome comments about the truck. Really pleased with how it looks and how it's turned out. Not sure what else is in store for it, but today we're going to be talking about uh, the whole setup on this truck and then also some tire questions that y'all been having about the Nitto Mud Grapplers. So so we'll go over all that in this video so make sure y'all watch till the end but anyways we're gonna get started please make sure to hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already uh, comment down below and let me know what y'all think about the videos also let me know how my editor is doing because uh, we want to make sure that uh, y'all are enjoying how the videos are turning out and all that kind of stuff without further ado we're gonna go over uh, the stuff on this truck So before we get to answering all the questions uh, of the truck, I just got back in town from my wife speaking at a conference in Ohio. And so had a long drive. Uh, we took the Denali and it drove pretty good. So anyways, I'm gonna stop by and check out Colby and Josh's job that they're working on over by the tree farm. I haven't seen them in feels like a week. So I'm gonna swim by there and just shoot the bull with them and see how they've been doing, coming along on their progress. So. All right, so a question I get a lot is how loud are these mud grapplers? So we're going about 60 right now, and I mean, it's not bad, I don't think. I mean, what do you think it's, compared to your car? It's not much louder. It sounds like... Helicopter or plane? Kind of, but not even that loud. Like, it's, it's yeah. a little quieter, I think. Okay. So, it's not too bad. So it's really not that bad. But I will say, you know, sometimes when you're getting up to like... 75, 80, you know, following the speed limit, of course. It does get a pretty decent bit noisy. In my opinion, I've had these tires on every single truck as far as I can remember. I mean, I'm completely used to them. Like, I, I don't even notice it. And then I'll be on the phone with customers or whoever, and they'll be like, oh my gosh, what's that noise? Or I can hear them tires or, or whatever. So I guess to people that aren't used to MTs or mud grapplers or any aggressive tire, that it can be noisy. So these newer trucks, I think I talked about in a video, here's a link above to the video where I talked about um, the tire noise with my wife. And these newer trucks are pretty well isolated as far as sound, road noise, and all that stuff goes. So comparing the Denali to the King Ranch as far as road noise uh, or tire noise, the Fords are a lot better insulated, I guess, for sound. And that's, that's just in my opinion. So how loud are they? They can get loud, but I don't think you're gonna kill your ears or anything like that. Another question I get a lot is, how many miles do you get out of your mud grapplers? And I never have an answer to that because it all depends on your drivability, how heavy your truck is, how much weight you're towing, or if you tow with it, um, how you drive, like as far as acceleration and braking. So there's a ton of barrier, but in my experience, I'd say I get 45 to 55,000 miles out of them. You know, I keep them rotated. I always make sure to drive. I mean, I drive like a grandpa anyway, so <laughs> I get pretty good tire life out of them. So I'd say, if you're asking me on my trucks, 45 to 55,000. Um, as far as for y'all, I mean, some of y'all drive like bad out of heck, so y'all might be only getting like 30. But anyways, we're pulled up to the job site. Here, let's show what the front looks like. So as maybe y'all know, Colby just had a baby. So they had new dad yeah. life. So uh, how, how's that life? It's incredible. Uh, <laughs> you get a lot less sleep, but it's the greatest thing in the entire cool. world. Yeah, it's awesome. man. So there, there's nothing like it. If I knew it was this cool, I'd have done it yeah. a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sleeping good now, eating good. Yeah. I miss him when I leave the house though. So. Well, I go take lunch at the house a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Smells old. I was thinking that when we walked up. Well, here's Louisiana. 
pretty cool. So this is like the tree farm, and so I think they're gonna like do some production of some sort with something from the trees or fruit or something like that. Interesting. I think, so. I think they're gonna do it in phases of that nature. I'm, I'm not really sure exactly what's going on, but yeah, it's I wouldn't even shop this thing. Yeah, it feels it feels a lot bigger than it looks on the outside. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, there's been a hole there for a while on the ceiling. What is that? Looks like a salt trap. Oh, it's a oh. Ir it's something for irrigation. Oh. Hmm. When I say salt, I mean the movie, not like an actual oh. salt. But you know, <laughs> very interesting. Ooh, that's a wasp. Get out of here. So this is the front, and there's a lot, there's a lot of tin that's bad on the roof and stuff. So um, I'll roll a quick drone shot of uh, the whole thing that I did for them before they started. But. I guess they're gonna start doing them phases and stuff like that. So we'll come around every now and then. Check it out. It would be cool. Do something that would make you internet famous. It's, can't just be on a roof. 15 seconds of fame. Oh gosh. No. That's not mission approved. We should put like a kiddie pool down here and just get you to like swan dive into it. That would be magical. I know the technique. Oh, well, did you have good form? Oh, okay. All right. I understand the idea. <laughs> Oh gosh, nice do you hear the mud? Is that what it is? I don't know if the mic's gonna pick it up, but yeah, the mud's getting splattered everywhere. <laughs> I can see him flying. <laughs> Alright, pulling up to the shop. Oh, there's my dad, and he is not shirtless today. <laughs> I finally got pulled into the shop. So this is the overall setup of the whole truck. So suspension wise, running our three and a half inch lift. Link down in the description below to get one for yours. And it's the full lift front and back. So on the front, you're gonna get all your track bar relocation brackets. You're gonna get your radius arm drops. You're gonna get your sway bar drop bracket. You're gonna get all your brake line extensions. Whole nine yards to keep your factory steering geometry. So as far as the ride of it, it rides great. It rides just like stock. I mean, I've had some guys say it was maybe even better than stock. You're able to still use your factory shocks, but if you want to do the shock upgrade, link in the description. So, tires, 37, 1350, 17 on this dually. Um, on my other trucks, 37, 1350, 20 is what I've run, and I've run 38s on my Black King Ranch I had a year, year ago. As far as fitment and stuff like that, the only place it'll hit is is on here. If I'm turning to the right, it's gonna hit this if I hit something really sharp like a sharp incline. And then also on the radius arms, it's gonna rub just because 1350 on a stock offset wheel will always rub the radius arm on any 37, even if you have 1250s. Maybe on 1150, I don't think you might hit it, but rule of thumb, anything 37 and above, 
with factory wheels, you're going to rub the radius arm, unless you're running some sort of spacer. But typically on my trucks, I don't run spacers, except for the rear on the dually. I'm actually having to run a three inch spacer, two and a half inch we tried, but it was a little bit too close as far as the edge of the tires because the mud grabbers are a lot more aggressive. So the sidewall is pretty, is pretty thick. And so I had to run a three inch spacer. Link in the description below to that. As far as the rear end goes, as you can see right here. So there's plenty of space. So if I'm towing and if I've got a load in there so that the tires can still flex and not rub on each other. So anyways, overall, you don't want the tires to be too close. You want to have enough space so that the tires can flex and still, you know, not run into each other. Now, as far as on the dually, what we did was take, took out the camper package or the leaf extra added leaf spring from factory and put the rear block in for the 350. So some guys on the 350 dually don't put the back end in, but uh, I just went ahead and put everything that came with the kit in here and took out the camper spring so that um, it wouldn't be too high. And then also U-bolts will be too short if you try to put everything in there. Anyways, this is how it kind of looks. Um, and again, like I said, the ride is really good. If you see it, it is nose down, probably about an inch um, because I tell my skid steer with it, I've got a fuel tank in the back, so I'm running a 70 gallon fuel tank with my cam locker toolbox. A lot of y'all have asked what type of toolbox it is, cam locker. Uh, I'll put the link to the video above where we put this toolbox on the 250 that we had. So I uh, took it off that and put on this one. Go light, as y'all seen a couple videos back, how we mounted that, that's all in the previous videos. And as far as tailgate height, you know, it, it is pretty high, it's over, over my hips, but um, that's why Ford's got the comfort step to be able to step up in here. But yeah guys, this is the uh, overall setup of the whole truck. Um, hopefully that answers a lot of questions y'all have about, you know, tires and rubbing and trimming and stuff like that. I didn't do any trimming on this truck. Yeah, the only thing is just be careful when you're turning up something um, on the on the corners here. But that's about it. On the on the 250s, on the single rear wheels, you don't have to worry about that because actually the wheel is offset a little bit more inside than the dualies. So the 350 and the 450s have a little bit, uh, have, has an adapter that comes off the axle that pushes out the factor wheel a little bit. So on the 250s, you don't have to worry about going up inclines with stuff with 37s. You'll be able to clear it fine. So that's everything that I've done to this truck. I may do the mirror lights like I did in uh, previous trucks sometime. I may do some more tinning or something like that. So let me know down in the comments below what y'all think I should do with the truck. I mean, I think it's pretty much set in my opinion, but if y'all have any suggestions, let me know down in the comments below. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank y'all so much for watching. If y'all want some merch, link down in the description below. And uh, we got some hats back in stock. Um, we've got, um, I've got some t-shirts that I've had for a while that I need to put up on the website. So be on the lookout for those. Let me know down in the comments below also on some t-shirt ideas. Do y'all think I should do some t-shirts with some mottos and stuff like that? I've been trying to figure out, you know, if I, if I wanted to get more into the apparel stuff. So let me know down in the com comments below. But thank y'all so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe and we'll see y'all in the next video.